The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. Well, in keeping with a long-standing tradition that every September 25th, I always talk about the banking index. Uh, this is the first year I've started it, but we'll remember it next year. Uh, I posted in the, the uh, chat room, uh, the Tiger TV uh, den, uh, for Tiger TV, I posted in the banking index on a daily basis because uh, this is one that we looked at back in August, uh, right before I, I went on vacation for the birth of my little grandson. And, uh, you know, it stopped uh, pretty much right where it was supposed to. If you'll notice those equal triangles that are there, they are depicting the fact that the time up uh, was equal in both of the moves. In other words, the AB leg was equal to the CD leg in both price and time, which is perfect symmetry. You can't ask, you know, for much more than that. And then, as you can see, we came down uh, pretty hard. And then we had a little bit of a rally, uh, not quite to the 50% level, and then we're starting to weaken again in the banking index. Uh, the reason why I'm bringing this up is that, uh, if you'll recall, back in 2007, we had a similar situation occurring in the banking index. And I'm going to uh, bring that chart up so you'll be able to take a look at it. This is a weekly uh, banking index chart. And it also shows that same three drive to a top pattern, but this is on the uh, weekly basis. Uh, realize that the banking index dropped from 117 uh, down to 16. It gave back 90% uh, of its value and it since has only been able to rally back not quite 50%. Uh, some stocks have done better than others, of course, but uh, the overall banking index is still under a great deal of uh, pressure, whereas we've made new highs in the NASDAQ and we've made new highs in the Dow Jones. We've not been able to do that in the banking sector. Maybe this is what uh, Chairman Bernanke is seeing when he's uh, talking about his uh, uh, you know, his program and, you know, why he didn't taper. You know, maybe the banks need more money than they actually say they should. You know, who knows? That's just a six of one, half dozen of the other. But uh, we'll see, uh, you know, how it all wa wa washes out. We just have to be real careful here, folks, because the pattern that we had in October of 2007 is uh, what, what happened during, uh, you know, two, uh, 2013. So just keep a line, you know, keep an eye on those banking indexes. That was the index that, that started the whole thing to the downside. It was very, uh, if you were not around the markets at that time, it was very uh, dramatic to see something drop, you know, 90% over a two-year period. And some of the stocks, in fact, actually did, uh, you know, a whole lot worse, you know, than... Uh, than uh, the uh, the banking index itself, uh, you know, uh, the Bank of America has hardly come back at all. Uh, I'll, I'll put uh, the Bank of America chart up because I I think it's indicative of what's going on uh, in the market in some of these different stocks, and you'll see uh, the Bank of America also uh, in 2007 made a big butterfly pattern. Uh, up at the $54 level, and it dropped all the way down to $3 a share uh, in March of 2009, and has since rallied back. It rallied back to 19 during 2010, and right now we're making a 61% retracement of that move. So Bank of America is by you know far far weaker than many of the other stocks that are in the uh, in the complex. Uh, why this is, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty. My guess is it's probably related to these uh, mortgages that they had for people that turned out to be, you know, rather bogus, and that was not a, uh, you know, good thing to do to the people, and they're paying a, a pretty hefty price. I don't know how you can pay a, a heftier price than J.P. Morgan, because uh, Morgan has had a, uh, you know, really a lot of fines, you know, uh, levied to them uh, recently, and it's getting, uh, you know, getting worse and worse uh, for them. They're having a very strong day today after having a couple of days down, you know, with big gaps, and it's causing the Dow Jones to move up pretty good. But this stock is, uh, uh, for for J.P. Morgan, 
is really in big trouble, in my opinion, based on technical analysis. If you'll take a look at this, um, you'll notice that we've made a head and shoulders pattern in uh, J.P. Morgan from the June high, which was the left shoulder to the head that occurred uh, on um, you know the 28th of July, and then the right shoulder just uh, occurred uh, about seven days ago at the 50% retracement. This is a perfectly symmetrical head and shoulders pattern, and that gives us a price objective, a minimum price objective, at least 5% lower in uh, J.P. Morgan, somewhere in the 46 level, uh, and so it could be, uh, that's about 15%, so it could be quite a bit lower, uh, you know, down the road, but right now it's having a short covering rally, which is not unusual, but the fact that it left, you know, several gaps, but, uh, you know, they're, they're receiving a lot of fines, whether that has anything to do with the price of the stock, I'm not sure anymore, because, you know, what they tell us and what they do are two different things. So uh, those are the stocks that uh, in the banking index that I'm looking at that look uh, that they just just look like they're topping you know and they don't look like they're uh, you know they're doing nearly as well you know as they should be given the rest of the market you know where it is uh, of course if it's not a tech stock these days and it doesn't have a uh, uh, you know some type of a video card with it it makes you wonder whether it's even going to sell anything at all. Now we have to talk to uh, we have to actually we have to talk we have to show the big daddy rabbit here and that's Goldman Sachs and um, if you look at that one you'll see that we've made a uh, three drive to a top pattern where each high was just marginally higher than the other high we are actually you know trading uh, near the, um, uh, the nearer the June lows than we are the uh, August highs. So uh, this market also looks like it's made some type of a, a major top. And, of course, this is a major player. Uh, you know, this is the company that uh, took over from Lehman Brothers. Uh, when Lehman Brothers went under, they were their biggest competitors. And so that made it a point where you had to uh, say that, uh, you know, you were looking at uh, a situation where, you know, your competitor has gone. And, oh, boy, doesn't that make a good deal. What's really ironic is that you had the former chairman of uh, Goldman Sachs running the Treasury at that time, Hank Paulson. And, of course, he did very little to help Lehman Brothers. I don't understand why, but I'm not sure. If we take a look at, if we take a look at Goldman Sachs on a uh, little bit longer time frame, you'll see the uh, weekly uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 expanding triangle that was there. Uh, during October of 2007, and uh, we are making a three-drive pattern right now. And you realize that uh, Goldman Sachs has been in a downtrend, you know, ever since 2007. We've had lower highs. We had a lower high in 2009, 2010, 2011. Uh, we, we've taken out the high from 2012, but that was from a very low level. But the level in 2013 has not taken out the high from 2011. So that's telling us that, you know, we're looking at something that is telling us that the market is, at least the banking section, and, you know, the banking is, you know, how they, you know, find the money. And, you know, from the old, uh, all the president's men, you know, with Dustin Hoffman and Robert Redford about, uh, you know, Woodward and Bernstein and the uh, Watergate uh, problem, the uh, you got to follow the money. And if the money's not going into the banks, uh, the banks are having trouble you know what's going to happen you know to the uh, to the rest of the economy now that's a that's a question that's not answered by this old cowboy cuz i am just a technician and when i'm looking at these charts all i'm looking at is the fact that i'm able to uh, see some of them uh, you know relatively clearly as far as the patterns and these three in the banking index that we looked at look as about as clear as anything i can see now if these turn around and make new highs then I would say, well, these patterns have certainly failed, and everything looks okay in Camelot, and we're going to be uh, we're going to be all right. The sixty-four dollar question is is uh, is that going to be the answer? And I'm not sure uh, of that yet, but we'll find out uh, down the road. Now, since we're since we're talking about the money uh, in the markets, I wanted to uh, bring up the uh, the foreign currency here because. Uh, uh, by, if you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648, and we will uh, do what we can to, uh, you know, see where we are. We've we've just completed, uh, you know, the same type of pattern in the um, uh, foreign exchange market, especially the euro, based on the uh, 
market for uh, you know the euro versus the U.S. dollar because that's 53 percent of the dollar index, and we're up against the 786 retracement again uh, in the euro versus the dollar. And uh, you know we will uh, you know if the, if the dollar goes, this is what I'm watching, folks. I'll just give you my two cents worth here. I'm watching the U.S. dollar because if the U.S. dollar gets much below 79, it's trading at 80 and change right now, 80 40, and if it goes much below 79 that means that the federal reserve and our u.s treasury they said we don't really care what happens to the dollar you know we'll just debase it and try to pay back our bills if we can with cheaper money and that means that the price will go down that will probably mean that the price of our treasury bonds will go down also because if you're going to be buying things with cheaper dollars you certainly don't want to be paid interest rate that is almost nothing so we will we will find out you know what's going to happen with the interest rate market no matter how you look at it the treasury bond market is incredibly bearish we'll cover that after the break but it's uh it's really quite uh, quite nasty uh in the bonds we're having a little bit of a rally here for the last 6 or 7 days which is good but we frankly got a lot long way to go uh on the downside in the treasury bonds this was a 32 year high in interest rates i believe and i believe the things that we're having happening now are going to be incredibly uh, powerful things in the history books, you know, many years later. Much like what happened in 1980 when Paul Volcker came in and stopped inflation when it was 18 percent. So how are we going to stop the deflation? That's going to be the the $65 question if we can, you know, finally get to that point. The um, the one thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, oh, dear, oh, I've got to try to update a chart here. I've got some little data problems here, and I just wanted to do this before we get to the break because we've had the VIX index hold up. Uh, I have to refresh this to make sure I get it. Give me a second here. I want to make sure I have the correct data. Yes, we're okay. There's absolutely no fear in the market here, folks. Uh, no one has any fear at all. And why should they? The market goes up almost every day, and if it doesn't, it backs off two or three days you know, and then goes up. So... Um, this is a situation that is going to be rectified very soon, I think. Uh, we have some um, very strong astrological aspects that started uh, on the full moon and equinox that we had on um, September the 18th when the Fed came in and did their thing. Uh, the full moon was the next day on the 19th. But we have some really key cycle stuff coming in around the 10th and 11th of October. Uh, I know that uh, Martin Armstrong from Armstrong uh, Economics is uh, looking at uh, that number, uh, a date also of October the 10th. It's two days off of a Bradley date, but, uh, you know, we'll wait and see uh, how strong the market can be because we'll have to just give it a little bit of time. Listen, we'll take a little break here, 877-927-6648. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. 
You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, I'm going to make a little comment here. We've got a caller. It's actually one of my uh, favorite callers. Uh, John from Philadelphia is calling in, and I wanted to let you folks know that I've been doing this, this, this trading stuff for a very long time. I did my first trade in 59. Uh, that's 1959, not 1859. And uh, this young man that's coming on uh, to speak with us about some questions is as good as it gets. He sends me his uh, emails of what he's doing uh, and his tr his trades that he's doing, and he does them ahead of time. He doesn't, you know, do them in. in uh, so this guy knows what he's talking about. I'm thinking of making him a permanent member of my uh, of my radio show because but I know he doesn't have the time to do it. But, uh, John, it's awfully nice to talk to you, and I have to tell you that that chart you sent me on the S&P uh, earlier in the week was, uh, was really fantastic. What can I do for you, my friend? Larry, you're, you're, you're too much. You're, uh, well, it's the truth, you're John. You, 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 do as, you do your, as good uh, as good words. Well, you do as good as stuff as I've ever seen, so fire away, my friend. Well, you know, I uh, I uh, I only compare myself to you, and I uh, regularly <laughs> I regularly find I don't measure up. So all oh. I can do is aspire and work hard. So uh, so thanks very much. Um, it's okay, uh, Larry. I wanted to um, ask you, in addition to a, a lunar cycle, a Bradley uh, turn, a low uh, first second week of October. And of course, Armstrong's work um, 
has got a cycle turn in there. I'm, I'm wondering, is there any other astrological uh, influences that you can share publicly with us? Um, and then uh, after you answer that, I want to uh, bring up the bonds with you. Okay, uh, the answer to your first question about the astrological things is you know that we had the full moon and the equinox that occurred on the 19th. Uh, I'm writing a book uh, on the financial astrology for John Wiley. I've been working on it for two years uh, with a young man named uh, Shane Schmolny, and he is uh, a very bright young man. He's an incredibly adept astrologer. He's very good with computers. We've been using Alfie Lavoie's uh, air software program. It runs around six, $7,000, I believe. And it has all of the aspects that you could possibly do. And you can ask the market, the, you can ask the, uh, the program a question if you see something happening. Say, okay, when was the last time we saw this thing occur? And then it comes back and gives you the answer. And we have found some things that uh, actually sh uh, Shane found these. I didn't because he was doing the, the basic research. We, we d decided what to look at, but he did the, uh, he did the digging. He had the, he had the pick and the, and the shovel. But we found something on October the 19th that ends on, um, excuse me, on September the 19th that ends on October the 10th that is very similar to what happened between uh, September the 26th and October the 19th of 1987. Now, you know, as you recall, that was a big crash, and I'm not, I don't know if we're going to have a crash, but boy, the market, given the complacency and where it is and everything, certainly has you know, a lot of uh, reasons, uh, you know, to have something like that happen. I am not predicting a crash. I am short like you are, but I gave up predicting crashes after I was wrong on the last 32 I predicted. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I just think I'm just looking for, uh, you know, a pretty good a pretty good correction. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, uh, I concur with you. No need to uh, go out on limbs. Just, uh, but this, this stuff... These are they related to transits in the sky. In yeah. other words, the the larger number of transits that you have occurring cycles, you know, uh, that tells you that that's like a magnet that's pulling the market either up or down. And the same thing on the downside that you're able to uh, you're able to see the same thing on the downside. So uh, the, these are the things that we're looking. This will be in the book. You know, it'll be coming out sometime after the first of the year. And uh, but that's what we'll be watching. Larry, uh, thanks. Thanks on that. Uh, now to bonds. Yes. Um, I would like to um, uh, share with you that I found your work uh, in the first half of 2012 just uh, very helpful to me personally uh, in giving me the confidence in July of that year to begin. Actually, it was like August 6th. I began shorting the bond market there, and I'd done so repeatedly and successfully, and I'm now flat, and I've been flat, frankly, for, I think, actually six weeks or so. Now, we're at about 133 and a quarter or a half. Um, I want to just share with you, um, if uh, regardless of what the stock market does, um, I would like to be able to short the bonds, and the price I'm looking to short I don't know if we'll get there, but it's 135 and a, and a half up to 136. Um, that's where I'd like to short with, you know, a half or one point stop loss sort of thing. My question to you. John, you we have to take a break here, and I want you to come back after the break. So could you have time to stay with us, and we can talk I, more about this? I'd be very happy to. Thank you, Larry. This is, this is great information. Thanks a lot, John. We'll be right back. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. 
In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile.com in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back with our friend and expert technician. John, is it okay if I refer to you as John since that's your real name? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, listen. Uh, folks, we're talking about the bond market, and you were asking about, you know, the short area uh, to look at. And I posted into uh, Tiger TV the chart that you talked about uh, last year when we were making the head and shoulders pattern uh, on the long-term weekly bond chart. And what it looks like to me is that we are, uh, you know, we're looking like we're going to repeat the, the last big swing that we had, which was eight, uh, eight points in the bonds. It happened about a year ago. Yeah. Uh, that rallied up to the 61. Well, if you take 8 and add it to the low we made at 128, that's going to get right to your 136 level. That would be an equal move up, and it would be almost a 382 retracement of the uh, previous move down. So that's the number that I'm looking at. And believe me, you know, with bonds trading at 133, to get to 138 doesn't take very long at all, especially if there's some type of a, uh, you know, flight to quality or, you know, some other BS that they try to, you know, lay on us. Larry, uh, thank you for sharing that uh, uh, that chart, and I just have to uh, tell all the listeners the TFNN platform is just terrific with uh, Tiger TV and the uh, Tiger's Den so that, yeah. that we can see and use your charts. Um, you just mentioned eight points. 
I'm looking at the weekly chart you posted. Could you just point out where the prior eight-point bounce was? Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to find that on your chart. Well, that, that's why I get the big bucks, John. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Okay, exactly. if you go back, the reason. John, if you go back and look at the uh, time period in February and March when the market ah, was I trading see. around 140, it rallied up to the 149 level. And uh, that was the 61% retracement where we had the two lower highs, and it was the uh, right shoulder of your head and shoulders pattern. And that's where, uh, you know, that's where the thing really, uh, you know, turned uh, down from dramatically. So if we get this rally that we're thinking of, the 382 rally would take us up to about 136, maybe even as high as 139. Uh, but we'll get we'll get a chance. I, I really believe because uh, we hit a pretty strong 61 percent retracement on those bonds, uh, you know, in uh, late August. So I think we've got a shot at, uh, you know, being able to get this short off. Because I really think that we're looking at interest rates that are going to just uh, uh, scare some people. You know, it's a 32 year old cycle that has been topped, in my opinion. And uh, you know, the, the question is, is when, not if. <laughs> Uh, of course, that's my opinion. Of course, <laughs> sure. And uh, I've been I've been speculating in that direction. Um, just the the uh, significance of that July 2012 high up at 153 on the bond futures. Um, uh, it was uh, just so starkly obvious, given your um, uh, gosh, what was the pattern that was up there? You had a butterfly and a. Um, uh, uh, you know, that's what it was. It was uh, a 127 expansion right up there. And you mentioned 32 years, Larry. I'll actually fine-tune that. You have, uh, you have been the one who's uh, stressed upon all your students and made a big impression upon me about markets merely being numbers. And uh, 32 years is approximately correct. Uh, precisely, it was 31.4 years. And the number pi is 3.14. I just can't, uh, I can't get it out of my head how starkly accurate on very, very long-term perspectives market moves, turns, and endings of bull and bear markets sometimes takes place. So um, uh, I'm, I, uh, I'm hoping you get your full eight-point bounce to that 136 because I'd, uh, I'd love to put on a short again there. Well, it, it, this looks very... Um uh, probable because uh, you know the fact that we came out of here that that bottom we came out of uh, which was a three drive to a bottom pattern on the daily pattern and now you know we're just in the midst of uh, uh, the third week of this rally and uh, you know it wouldn't take very much at all for the market to uh, you know to get to that point so I think when we get there the problem is John as you know as well as I do when we get there you're going to have to have a screwdriver and a wrench to try to get anybody to sell bonds because you know they're all be thinking that it, you know interest rates are going to be dropping again and that's not usually going to be the case Indeed. because you know this is a major pattern that has topped and uh, you know this is a really strong uh, market to the downside it, it really is I mean you look at long-term mortgage rates they're uh, 30-year rates are above 4% now, and so it's uh, it's going to be a very tricky situation, you know, to try to, you know, tell people that you know, interest rates, you know, are going to be going, uh, you know, higher and not lower. Larry, uh, thanks so much for that input. John, uh, since I'm, I have I'm, you on the line, I have to ask you a question because you have right. you have nailed these, these grain markets uh, spot on for the past uh, seven or eight months. You've been talking about lower lows in corn. Uh, all along, are you still looking for your price level of around 425 in the Christmas corn, December corn? Uh, Larry, I uh, the answer is yes, but let me let me share this. Since uh, I was uh, I was anticipating four and a quarter uh, with with decent weather, and that was when uh, Deese corn was up at 575 or so. Uh, Deese corn has come down. I think it's currently 455 having moved to 445 and to my way of thinking uh, 445 is essentially uh, having met my 425 targets it's been a big move down I see very little uh, reason to be wanting to try to grab more out of the short side in other words the move the meat of the move has come and I, I uh, always follow 
um, uh, a principle that you've taught, namely uh, uh, don't try to uh, scrape for the edges. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to catch the meat of the move, take Don't worry about move. the last 5%, that's for sure. <laughs> exactly. And uh, what I can tell you, um, I'll be looking at some points uh, to go long corn. Uh, I don't see anything here. What I will tell you is, um, of course, now that harvest is underway, and I think 15% of the corn crop is now in, and it will rapidly come out of the fields, and you'll have some hedge selling pressure, all that, of course. But uh, we can't forget that uh, we're now coming into the season where the South American and Indian crops are going into the ground. So, you know, we can be uh, paying attention to what weather factors are down in the southern hemisphere. So. So nothing to say now, but I'll be looking towards the long side, frankly, in the next couple of months. I remember uh, about four or five days ago you were buying gold when it was way down into the, uh, uh, right near the uh, 1200 and I forget what, 1280 or something. Are you still in that position or you still think we're going higher in the gold? You know, uh, yes, Larry. And uh, furthermore, I was going to ask you as a parting shot uh, uh, in your show today to give your thoughts on silver. What, what's attracted me here is there's been now a quadruple bottom in silver over the past, what, eight trading days at about the 2130 level. The FIB 618 mark is down at, I think, at $20.80. Um, so I am probing the long side on silver, and I'm, uh, uh, once again, since that's a highly uh, volatile and sometimes a liquid contract, I'm following your... Uh, your uh, uh, principles of not giving the trade very much, uh, but um, wanted to see if you saw uh, the prospect for a uh, renewed bull run in silver. But that's that's where I'm speculating, and so there you have it. Well, we have a, we have a head and shoulders pattern, you know, based over the last month in the silver uh, contract itself, because we made a low back on the you know the twelfth. Uh, and, and, and then in and, and, and the 18th was, uh, you know, the full moon. And then we had the other low come in on the 24th. And so that, you know, sets up a head and shoulders pattern. And when we're starting to rise above it, we've had a very strong move in gold today. Uh, silver hasn't participated as of yet, but uh, you're right. It is okay. The problem that I have with the silver is twofold, John, is the open interest and uh, volume has not been, you know, indicative of a big bull market coming. And the second thing is, is, and you're well aware of this because we've chatted about it before, is that the liquidity in silver can be sometimes very, very treacherous. In other words, you can put a stop in there thinking you're going to risk 10 or 15 cents, and you might get filled 30 cents, you know, $1,500 away from where you thought you were going to be filled. So people should be aware of that, that when you're trading silver, you know, that, that can't happen. With gold, that's not the case. Gold, you're going to get filled within... Usually a dollar, uh, sometimes right on the money. That, that's what most of my fills usually are within a, you know, 10 cents or so. But um, the, the silver is a lot more difficult. So I tell people, if you want to trade a metal, trade the silver, or trade the gold, because that's far more liquid. It's six times the liquidity and volume, and it's, it's much better uh, to be trading that. Uh, yeah, I, can't, uh, I can't agree with you more, Larry. Uh, when you are trading uh, silver COMEX futures, it's a big contract. Uh, you have to uh, you have to always be thinking risk management and uh, uh, stop orders are, are are frankly something you know if you uh, you want to place overnight when you're asleep. But other than that, uh, because of that um, stop limit uh, feature that the uh, Chicago Merck has installed that you spoke uh, very lengthy about last week, it makes uh, it makes risk uh, risk management here in that uh, silver comex futures treacherous. I I do agree. It makes a situation almost untenable. They're trying to get that, uh, the people are writing in vociferously about this uh, uh, law that the, the Merck has passed, uh, you know, regarding these uh, limit orders. And it's a terrible thing to, to, to put a, uh, a limit on an order like that. When you want out of a trade, you want out. You don't want to have to say, I, I don't want out at this price. Well, my gosh, the way it jumps around, you don't always uh, get a chance to get out at that price. You know what I mean? Indeed, indeed. Yeah, so that makes it very difficult to uh, look at it. You know, tomorrow on the on the uh, show we're going to talk about uh, uh, sugar and some of the other things that have been happening because we've had some pretty good moves uh, in sugar that we were looking at uh, you know a few months ago. 
that it finally uh, happened. So we'll, we'll have a pretty good interest on that. John, I want to thank you again for calling in, and I always enjoy it. So anytime you even have a slightest inkling of calling in, because I learn something and I make money off your trades, buddy, so keep those emails coming, okay? Will do. Pleasure speaking okay. to you, Larry. You bet. My pleasure, John. Bye. Okay, that's Mr. John from Mr. JC from the Tiger uh, TV group. He's in the, the Tiger Den almost every day posting his trades as they happen, not afterwards. He's telling you what he's buying and what he's selling. And uh, he gives you the stop points that he's looking at. And uh, he's, in, he's a very, very good technician. Plus, he uh, is a very, very nice fellow besides that. I'm going to post the chart for the uh, long-term uh, gold chart because we, are, uh, we have just had a, a pretty good bounce off the bottom here. We rallied about uh, $50 an ounce uh, off the low we had uh, coming in at the 50% retracement of this last up move. And all we need now is a move above um, the 1340 uh, level, and that would tell us that we're probably pretty close, you know, to getting ready to break out to the upside. And we could get as high, uh, as a matter of fact, we could get as high on this next swing, which would be the, the very first ABCD correction. We could get as high as 1560 on the gold. I'm going to put this in because it's such a beautiful Gartley pattern that it's just, uh, it's worth it's worth the price of admission to see this because it's really a, a very nice pattern to uh, take a look at. So um, right now we're trading at 1337 in the gold. And, uh, you know, if we can get above the 1340, 1342 level, we've got a shot. Uh, it won't be straight up, folks. You know, gold jumps around a lot. It moves $50, $60, you know, just in a heartbeat. So it doesn't take much, you know, for it to... Uh, uh, move uh, you know that much without any trouble so this is what we're watching uh, in the gold market we've been very bullish this for quite some time uh, ever since the bottom was made down at that 1170 per uh, uh, per ounce level which was the 61 percent retracement you know on the um, retracement for the um, long-term weekly chart and that was the first big ABCD correction that we've had in gold in five years and you know as Gartley said you know, be sure to buy the first ABCD correction in a bull market, and uh, that's what we did, and so far it's working out uh, okay. On tomorrow's show, oh, by the way, if you folks haven't signed up for Steve Rhodes' uh, class tonight, uh, and if you're having trouble trading, you know, it's really worth it. It doesn't cost hardly anything. It's uh, the cost of two trades, and Steve Rhodes is as good as it gets, folks. Uh, I know uh, I know him personally. I like him as a person. He's an honest guy. He's an incredible student of the market. He's got great information. He even does a you know a great deal of astrology work. I won't hold that. I won't hold that against him. But he's got some wonderful things on money management and entries and stuff. And uh, he's a he's a real straight shooter. And he'll give you a lot of good information and help you. And not only that, but he'll hold your hand through the process. And you don't get many people that will do that. So if you get a chance tonight. You know, go into Tiger TV and sign up for Steve's uh, webinar, and uh, I think you'll be well pleased. Uh, you know, you'll get up. You get a whole free uh, month of the newsletter if you sign up too. So that's a that's another good reason. Uh, you know, to do the uh, to do the show. So I, or, you know, to, to to sign up for the webinar. So that's my uh, my feeling on it. So uh, if you'll uh, you know give it a shot, I think you'll you'll be very very pleased. Just the money management part. And the psychology part is worth the price of admission. Okay, we've got to take a break here. 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.6% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. And all six of those winning trades had been initiated no earlier than just the previous month. With the 600th weekly Gold Report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began, and right now you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. 
Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market provides trading opportunities after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rose, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I've decided uh, <laughs> it's my show, so I guess I get to decide. Uh, I put in a chart for the emerging markets. Uh, that's the ETF, EEM, and uh, this uh, chart goes back uh, well over a year and a half, and it shows uh, you know the the big patterns that unfolded over this time period. And just recently, uh, on uh, September the 19th, when we had the full moon and the autumn equinox, uh, we completed a Gartley pattern, a bearish Gartley pattern at the 786 retracement of the high uh, that we made. And this is another indication that the rest of the world, you know, is tagging behind us badly, and this is still a downtrend. Uh, long term, this this is uh, very very weak. Uh, you look at the weekly chart. This thing has been in a bear market for many many years. But the important thing I think that is uh, even more important than the Gartley itself, uh, and you know how much I love Gartleys. There's a one three five uh, pattern there, and the one three five pattern is where wave three is lower than wave one and wave five is lower than wave three. That's how you define tr a trend. When you have lower tops, you have a downtrend, and that's what you had coming in at the 786. And this tells us, and we've been down seven days now, so having a little bounce back wouldn't uh, wouldn't be a surprise to anyone. So 
this is the uh, this is the uh, another another piece of the puzzle that makes me believe that you know what we've been looking at here is uh, you know uh, still in a bear market in, in many things even though we've made new highs in our U.S. stock markets and we've made new highs in the FTSE and the DAX and the French market they've made marginal new highs I mean there's nothing you know no major breakouts that you know that I can see uh, tomorrow when we work on the uh, commodity show uh, I'm going to to feature uh, sugar and I'm also going to feature copper. And we're going to look at corn, and we're going to look at beans and wheat, because these are all coming off of some major spots here that could offer some nice, uh, you know, buying opportunities uh, for us. So we'll look at that on the commodity report tomorrow. Uh, if you have any questions uh, before we end the show here, it's eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. And I would like to uh, say again that if you get a chance to. Uh, go to Steve Rhodes's uh, class that he's giving tonight. It's really worth the money, folks. Uh, I've been around a long time, and you know I don't make anything off this. I don't get a commission or anything. I'm just telling you, if you need help, that man can help you. He's got got good information. You know, he's worked really hard with uh, the Tony Robbins things. He knows the patterns very well. He understands cycles, and he understands money management. And that's the most important thing that we deal with here. That along with the psychology. So those are things that. That if you need help, this is a, this is the place to go to get it. TFNN is great for the educational things that it has, and the quality of people that it has is just uh, you know un, unprecedented uh, in my 50 years of being in this business. And and uh, I I was one of the first people to register with the CFTC back in 1975, and uh, it was uh, you know, a long time ago. I think the, the dues at that time was $15 a year, so it was a different time and a different place, of course. Now, we, we, talked, about, uh, we talked about the gold, the importance of gold getting above this, uh, this $1,340, $45 area, because then it would set up for a much nicer move into the... Uh, you know, even heading towards 1560, because I think that's where we're going in gold. I believe that's going to be the big ABCD uh, pattern in gold. I posted that into Tiger TV so you folks could see it, and it looks like that's where gold is going to go uh, on a long-term basis. So we'll keep an eye uh, keep an eye on that. I think the bell on the wall is getting ready to ring, so I wanted to thank everybody here. Uh, for coming in, and I hope you get a chance to uh, visit my show tomorrow on commodities because I'm working on it already. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Questions are the answer. You want a better life? Ask a better question. My driving force in life is how can I become the intelligence behind financial freedom? It's why I take massive action. It's why I've invested over 10,000 hours and thousands of dollars to create the answer, the ultimate money machine. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, and on Friday, September 27th, I'll be hosting a one-day online master trader course, The Ultimate Money Machine, where I'll teach you the exact same trading strategies that I use every day when trading the markets and advising my newsletter subscribers. Learn how to precisely identify identify the market's next move, when to pull the trigger by letting the market commit to you before you commit to it, and how to manage your trade to maximize your results, just as we did in the month of August, when I advised my newsletter subscribers of 11 new trades, resulting in one loss and a combined profit of 129%. Our next move, it's days away. The cost of this course, $595, less than $2.50 per trading session over the next year. If you're looking for the answer, it's the ultimate money machine. All the details on the front page of TFNN.com.